this is my microphone that I normally use and um, I've opened this switch here because this switch is the part that connects this to the power there's this little thing over here uh, two contacts one two and uh, it's just wide enough that it would contact this one and this one for off it would it would be this one and this one for on it would be here for mono it would be here but this one when it's on it connects to this but these two pads are connected together as you can see here these are together but I noticed that uh, my mic um, no matter where I move it sometimes it sometimes does not like to turn on unless I kind of push it on the edge right here then it might turn on so I opened this up uh, this is a switch here and uh, here is the little cover thing for it I opened it up and I've cleaned it with some alcohol and it used to look sort of gummy for some reason I'm not sure how the gum got in there but I'm hoping cleaning it up should uh, make it work better um, normally I would not go inside a component level because this is a component level right this is a switch normally if this breaks you take this out put in another switch but you won't go around opening it up but I wanted to take this video to uh, show you that this is possible when you're very very careful with it I'm not even sure if I can actually put it back together but I'm going to try see I gotta put that contact back in like this hopefully it stays by the way I'm looking at all this under a microscope right now I don't actually have a microscope camera that's why I can't zoom in for you guys hopefully later on I'll get one and then you get you can see what's what I'm doing more clearly Ah, very delicate. Sometimes, you know. Great. I don't know where that went. Okay, I found it. Oh, I gotta be extra careful. Because if these little guys, if they bounce around, I really should be working on this in a cleaner area. But, you know. It's gotta do what you gotta do keep on losing them how are these even staying in there I don't know oh my gosh this is probably like oh shoot this is probably like um watchmaking maybe Assuming that went in okay. I now gotta put this lid on. Orient it correctly first. Okay. Just kidding, I found it. Okay. There's some debris on it, some dirt, and it's a little moist from something. It might actually be a good thing that it's a little wet. Let me just shove it back in like that. Because uh, the wetness sort of makes things stick together for now. Oh my gosh. Okay. I seriously thought I would have never put that back together, but I did. I wonder if that is working fine. Will it stay? It might stay. Let me check the ohm connection here. Before it had about 10 ohms in between. Now it has 0.3. This might actually work. This other switch is for the mono and stereo. It actually has quite high uh, ohmage as well. 
But since it's not broken, I'm getting stereo. I'm gonna, I don't think uh, I wanna risk it and try to fix this. Okay, let me put this back together. Here was the microphone over here. Um, this shoves inside. There's these little pins. This thing goes back on here. These little pins uh, goes on here for the little switches. Once I push this back in, I have to uh, connect these cables, solder these cables back on. Uh, so let's see. So these little wires, I always forget where they connect to, which color is which. So I always take a picture before I unsolder things. So now I'm gonna look at the picture so I'll know for sure. Okay, I'm back. Now I have the soldering thing. R is usually red. G is not green, but ground. Over here left is this white one. And then this is battery powered. It says BAT over there. So we got it all sorted out. Solder it back on. So this is really actually really neat when uh, you can fix stuff like this. Uh, normally people would just toss this away, but for me, um, I don't buy warranties usually because um, I can go and help myself and fix this stuff. Usually. I find that cameras are really, really difficult to repair though, so point and shoot cameras, it's not worth it. Okay, now it's back on. Let me put the battery back in. I usually don't want to reassemble everything. Reassemble as little as possible. Oh, oh, okay, it's on. Uh, but I do have to put this, no, I don't have to put that back in. I can just uh, use a screwdriver. It looks to work very well, actually. I have confidence I can put this back in now. So what happened before with this thing is I can turn it off, okay? Oh, it's a little sticky. Well, I gotta push it back in a little bit. Okay, I can turn it off, and then when I turn it to stereo, it would always turn red. So maybe I should use a lower battery, like a like a not as strong a battery, because it seems to not do this when it's really, really high battery, like a, a brand new fresh battery, but as soon as it drains a little bit, it'll have a hard time going to stereo here and always looks red. When it's red, I get bad audio quality. Right now, it's a good battery, but I see that it's uh, going not going to red. I can even go to mono and stuff. So let me put in a less battery, uh, not as charged battery, to double check its function. Here's a 1.38 volt one. This should do it in terms of... Yeah, 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 yeah. It works still. Okay, so we're all good to go. So I'm not gonna put all this back together. I thought the interesting part was uh, moving it out. Anyway, you got these pins. I'm gonna push these pins back in. Um, there was just two screws here, a little screw cap I put back in. There's two little uh, rubber grommets that ties this to the here, here to here. Um, it's sort of like an anti-vibration thing, and that's it. If you saw my Japan vlog, I actually broke this off I had to buy super glue at a convenience store and super glue this back on. Now, if I remove these screws, this thing actually will not come apart anymore, but it seems like I didn't have to pull it apart to fix this thing. So we're, we're all good to go. Thanks for watching, everybody.